Today, I got myself a formidable cake opponent with the pancake stack cake. The more work that continues to be done on the stack of pancakes, the more it starts to look like a stack of pancakes. Buckle up. I'm just not gonna give up without a fight. So what's cracking, everyone? Welcome to my home and it is ours for today, of course. I have started a friendly little challenge here to cook the recipes from the cookbooks from the TV show, The Great British Bake Off. Like this one right here, The Big Book of Amazing Cakes. I tried making the Fraisier cake last time, last episode, and I barely got out of this one alive. Oh, oh my God. I think it would be a good idea to just kind of dive back into the hornet's nest, so to speak, and make another one of these right here. So how about the stackin' Sunday cake? Because it is Sunday, actually, so it's kind of meant to be. And yeah, here it is. Looks like a pancake stack. And I still have yet to watch the show, but it is from the contestant Liam here. And it's his Illusion Masterpiece, which was a real highlight of season eight and would make a fantastic celebration showstopper for someone whose love of blueberry pancakes is equaled only by a love of delicious cake. It's gonna take me three hours, hands on, it says. I don't know about that. It's gonna take me a lot longer than that, I'm sure. And just for your information here, I have dabbled in making cakes look like other things before, like I made a unicorn cake. Island cake. You know, one looks hideous, one looks okay. And coming right up, a pancake stack cake. Let's do it. So I gotta start off with making this granola crumble. So can I have the food processor beam in the whiz kid? Perfect. One and a half cups of pecans, 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 whatever you want to call it. And I'm gonna pulse it until it is a large crumb. I think that should do it. Bowl me. Thank you. Tip half a cup, 60 grams of flour into a bowl. Add the blitzed pecans, pecans, I don't know. Call them whatever you want to call them. Bring over your tower of stuff. Awesome. Two third cup, 60 grams of rolled oats. Woo! A quarter cup of wheat germ. Quarter cup. I don't know what that is in grams. I should have measured. I don't know, I'm sorry. Quarter teaspoon of salt. We got a couple different types of sugar here. Quarter cup, 62 and a half grams of demerara sugar. It's like raw sugar. Half a cup, 105 grams of light muscovado sugar. Muscovado. It's a new one for me. It smells like molasses. Seven tablespoons of unsalted diced chilled butter. So mix that all together. And then with my fingertips, I just gotta squeeze the butter with everything else until I have these large chunks of crumble. That is the best thing I've ever had in my life. What are we gonna do with this? Just out of your face for now. And we gotta move on to the sponge cake. I bought new cake pans, I know. Six inches in diameter by two and a half inches high. And I got three of them. I even did a little research here and made sure that I was buying cake pans that the internet say are a-okay. What I'm gonna do here before I do anything, grease up my brand new cake pans, and then my parchment paper circles with the Sharpie faced down, of course. The recipe, or Liam here, is even asking for the sides to be lined, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna listen. Say sa. I wanna make my cake look like the one in this book here. It's got a nice height to it. It looks really fluffy. It just looks really tasty. Beam in the whiz, kid. Thank you. Start off with buttermilk and I need three tablespoons worth. Oh, that's some thick buttermilk. Tip it into the food processor. Tip it in, there's that word again. Okay, so along with a teaspoon of vanilla extract, I need an overripe banana and I only need one, so pick the most overripe of the bunch. This is as overripe as I got here. Locked and loaded, pulse until smooth. Perfect. 
Bowl me. Thank you. I'm gonna need the sieve too, sorry, I forgot. Thank you so much. I got two and a quarter cup or 280 grams of self-rising flour and I'm gonna sift it into a bowl here. As I did with the last cake, I made my own self-rising flour today. For every cup of all-purpose flour, I use one and a half tablespoons of baking powder. I just add a little pinch of salt in there too. You're supposed to add a quarter teaspoon of salt for every cup if you're following the American version of self-rising flour. However, that's because the British version of self-rising flour doesn't have salt in it. Uh, and this cookbook is the Great British Bake Off, but is the American version of the cookbook. So I'm not exactly sure what type of flour they're talking about and how much salt I should be adding. So long story, very long, I added just a pinch of salt. <laughs> in with the flour, a teaspoon of cinnamon, half a teaspoon of nutmeg. It now says a quarter teaspoon of salt. And this is where the confusion comes in, right? With the flour. Should I add it? Should I not? I think I'm just gonna continue to confuse myself with just a little light pinch of more salt. And three quarter teaspoon of baking soda. Got it. Gotta go fetch a friend. Let's welcome back to the show, the Silver Fox. Silver Fox into the stand mixer bowl goes one cup, 226 grams of softened unsalted butter, 173 grams or two third cup plus a tablespoon of granulated sugar. Half a cup, 55 grams of light brown sugar. Paddle attachment on there. I wanna pay close attention to what I'm about to do because I don't wanna undermix or overmix this next step. High speed for four to five minutes until pale and creamy. Honestly, my high speed feels a bit like warp speed, so I think I'm just gonna turn it down to a nice medium high, medium high. That's a nice speed. Okay, Vandabob. I think that's got a nice, <laughs> nice creaming to it. So I got four eggs here. So I'm gonna add the eggs little by little, beating well over each addition. And if you're gonna be a cowboy like this, just be careful not to break any of the shell into the mix. And from the food processor here, the buttermilk and banana mixture, I'm gonna stream that in on a low speed. Okay, so very interesting development here, but the mix is completely split. It looks, it looks rough. And it says that if it does split, then add a tablespoon of the flour mixture in and continue beating. On a low speed, add the flour. I added all the banana mixture at once and then I added all the flour. But you were supposed to kind of go back and forth between the two. But honestly, this looks, <laughs> I can't concern myself with that now because I already did it. Okay, just a quick 10 second tidy here. He shoots, scores, easy shot. Uh, get the cake pans. Add this cake mixture, which looks freaking incredible into the cake pans. We gotta smooth out the surface with an offset spatula. So there's gotta be an equal amount in each one of these. Yes. Is that for me? Mm-hmm. That looks great. Just put these here for a moment. Should've done this earlier, but with a lined baking pan here, I'm gonna pour this crumble out. Okay, don't mean to gloat, but that does look amazing. Might have another taste test. Yep. Bake the sponges and the crumble mixture for 25 to 30 minutes together in the same oven. I could have been baking this the whole time. Yeah, I'm not gonna do that. That's a bit too dodgy for me and my skills. So I think I'm just gonna bake all three cakes now and then when those are done, then I'll put the crumble in. Let's see, if I do one there, one there, one there, and I just keep my eye on all three. And if I need to rotate them around, I will. Did I mentioned that the oven's set to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. I don't think I did. After 30 minutes, poke a toothpick into the center and it's gotta come out clean. Okay, that one's done. So all three cakes should now be baked. Let's let these hang out like that for 15 minutes. And then the crumble into the oven keep moving the crumble around so it's not sitting around just burning in one spot. Honestly, it's been like 12 minutes and this is done now. Deep dark golden brown, it's coming out now. So the first cake I took out of the oven cratered 
like some bitch <laughs> took it out of the oven way too prematurely. So it was just sitting here and I could see it sinking. So I quickly tried to put it back into the oven. It was too late. So that's the bottom piece. Anyway, the other two cakes look great and they've all cooled off. Get these on a cooling rack. And get these just off to the side until they've cooled completely. Um, I'll be back. Okay, it's time. Moving on to the Swiss meringue buttercream. Step seven of 20. It's not bad. <laughs> uh, let's start off with a bowl. Thank you. Four extra large egg whites. 300 grams, one and one third cup plus a tablespoon of light brown sugar. That's the most amount of brown sugar I've ever used all at once. Let's get that onto the pot of gently simmering water. And let's arm ourselves with the granny. Let's do it. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna move the camera first. Until the sugar has dissolved. The egg white's gotta feel smooth, but not gritty. Welcome back, the Silver Fox. Silver Fox, this time fitted with the whisk attachment. And this hot mixture, ooh. And then we transfer the hot egg white mixture to the Silver Fox. Okay, it's kind of got like a, uh, yeah, it does have like a, um, I'll talk about it later. So I gotta whisk this on a medium high speed to a stiff meringue. It's not on. That is definitely stiff meringue. However, you gotta continue to whisk until the bowl is completely cool to touch. Cool to touch. So we got a big pile of butter here. One and three quarter cup or 400-ish grams of room temperature diced unsalted butter. And I gotta add in a little, mix it, and then keep the party going, you know what I mean? Adding the butter little by little, beating it continuously until it's light and fluffy. It's a lot of butter, man. Let's keep going. Keep it going. All right. Next up, half a teaspoon of vanilla. Now this is a quarter cup of forest honey. The recipe specifically asked for Spanish forest honey. All I could find was white forest honey. Uh, it's in a forest, so in goes the quarter cup. Uh, and you can keep it moving. Okay, that's smooth and fluffy. And now that I've added all of that in, the contents of this Silver Fox bowl may contain the most unhealthiest thing I've ever made. And then we just set it aside. I'll just put it there. Uh, so... It is getting a bit cluttered over here, but I can't stop right now. Can't stop, won't stop. Moving on to a blueberry compote saucepan. Two and one third cup of frozen blueberries. All right, that ended up being that whole bag. Um, <laughs> two tablespoons of the forest honey. With a quarter cup of water. I'm gonna bring that to a boil over medium heat. Four teaspoons of cornstarch go into three tablespoons of water. Whisk. Okay, that goes into the blueberries. So I gotta stir this gently for three to four minutes and don't break up those berries. Once that's smooth and glossy, I'm gonna take it off the heat. This is when things start getting interesting, if they weren't already. I gotta make the fondant for the pancakes. You know the pancakes on the outside of the cake, or at least they look like pancakes. Yeah, they're made from fondant from mini marshmallows. Oh, thank you. And do I have the scale close by? That'd be nice. I need the biggest bowl I got right now. 
for 907 grams of mini marshmallows, AKA two pounds. And if you miss the bowl, that's okay. You can, I don't think I have a bowl big enough for this, Liam. Okay, you know what? I actually read the recipe wrong. I don't need all these mini marshmallows. I only need one pound, 453 grams worth. So if you need mini marshmallows, you let me know. Because that was gonna be ridiculous, there's no way. Two and a half tablespoons of water, a small amount of cream food coloring. Uh, I couldn't find something that was just sold as cream food coloring. The closest one I could find was ivory. I mean, to me, when they were showing an example of what this looks like, it looked like cream. So as long as I use just a small amount of it, I uh, just do a little more. There, it's leaking out the side, not the nozzle part. There, <laughs> that's probably too much. Take the marshmallow out. Go with a smaller amount to start. If you need more, you need more. Set the bowl over a large pot of simmering water. And we're stirring this continuously. While you're stirring it, if you need a color boost, add in some of those marshmallows covered in food coloring. I think I could use a couple more shots of ivory. Once all the marshmallows have melted, oh yeah, six and two third copper, 835 grams of powdered sugar. That's right. Sift in a quarter of it at a time. At a time, into the marshmallows. I'm warning you now, this is gonna get messy. That's the ticket right there. Mixing well after each addition of icing sugar, powdered sugar, convectioner sugar, whatever you call it, until it's stiff. Okay, now we gotta get our hands dirty here. We gotta knead this just like it's a freaking pizza dough. It's kind of just like a miserable experience, I'm not gonna lie. Okay, uh, I gotta change kind of what... Rumba. Okay, grease up the work surface with some shortening. Uh, all right, let's keep going. Oh, yeah. Gotta knead this into a ball. I think it would be a good idea to add a little more cream color in there. Now the recipe said just add a small amount of food coloring to start. And that's what I did, just a small amount. Then I added more and more and more. And it hasn't really turned color at all. It's still got a cream look to it, but I was expecting a little more. I could keep going, but I feel like I'm spinning my wheels right now. Let's move on. Into a ball shape, I'm gonna wrap this up and just set it aside. I gotta clean up, it's gonna slow me down. <laughs> Always seems like a better idea on paper. I gotta circle back to something that I skipped, which was, so the deep golden crumble is gonna go back into the whiz kid. Pulse to a large crumb. Bowl me. Thank you. Now, there's gonna be a lot of people that either love or hate this next step back in the day. I would have hated it, but as the years go by, I find myself more and more enjoying raisins. I don't know. Two third cup of raisins and another half a cup of pulverized pecans. There you go. Hello. First it says to level the sponge cake so that they're all the same height. And I think I did a pretty good job with that. I don't see any problems besides this massive crater. So uh, let's move on. <laughs> We're using a small amount of buttercream. I'm just gonna put it on the base of the plate. And then the ugliest piece of cake can go right there. Since this is the cake with the crater, I figure I put a little surprise in there, in the center there. <laughs> so some of that blueberries is just gonna go I don't know, that's what I was thinking. Spreading one third of the buttercream over the sponge. One third, eh? Okay, well that's a lot. And then spread it even, a good sprinkling of the crumble, and then a third of the blueberry compote. Top with the next sponge. So another third of the buttercream. Whoops. And some more of the crumble. 
Okay, you're gonna have to stop for a second to think. How are you gonna do this? It's starting to, uh, more blueberries. Good Lord. Ay boy. So the remaining buttercream is gonna act as a crumb coat all over this cake. And a crumb coat is just kind of a protective... <laughs> okay, sorry, I'll talk in a second. Oh my God. Is that leaning? I can't tell. There. <coughs> having unicorn cake flashbacks. This might need to go in the fridge now. Yeah. Pausing the operation now to get this into the fridge. Actually, you know what, maybe the freezer. Oh, Chilled the buttercream a little bit. The cake is a little little frozen to, enough to get this crumb coat on. This part always reminds me of why I hate making cake so much. I know that you could create a like a turntable and you're spinning this around while you're doing this. I just completely forgot all about that until I was in the moment. Then I was like, oh, too late. Fairly messy crumb coat, I understand that, but that's why a crumb coat exists. Keep the mess contained. Now it's been so many years since I've made these types of cakes that I completely forgot there's a lot of things that you just kind of have to know in order to succeed in this kind of cake making. And one of the things that's not mentioned in that cookbook is every time you put a layer of cake on, you should be putting it in the fridge or the freezer just to chill, just to set, and then you can put it on the next layer. But I didn't do that, I just went gung-ho with it. And uh, well, you saw what happened. Thankfully, I got myself, I hope, out of it, but. So if you're anything like me and you just, completely despise the texture of corn cornstarch, then you're gonna hate this because I'm dreading it. I don't wanna do this. It has to be done to get to the next step. And I do wanna get to the next step. Ugh. On a surface lightly dusted with cornstarch, I gotta divide my fondant into 12 pieces. Roll 10 of the pieces into thin sausages long enough to wrap around the cake. Okay. This piece of twine right here wraps around the entire circumference of the cake. So what I gotta do is roll out 10 of these fondant, 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 <laughs> fondant, fondant, whatever, into thin sausage shapes. This needs to be that length. It's kind of hard to roll this. Okay, I'm looking at the image there. They don't have to look perfect. There's one. It's like we're making gnocchi, you know? Except not as fun and a little more challenging. But that should do it. Cake back over here. I gotta wrap these pieces of fondant around the cake. And then this right here is called edible glue. Mm -hmm. It's in the recipe, so I bought it. And then there we have our first pancake wrapped around the base of the cake. All right, next up, wrap around the base, glue the two tips together, and we just keep stacking them. Make sure that the tips are always meeting at the same spot. Just kind of pretend like there's a pancake here. Just glue it on, yes. Stretch that final piece out into a circular shape, kind of resembling a flapped jack. All right, get it on top. So, all right, you're just gonna stretch it out, kind of. It's the roughest looking piece on this cake. Uh, but if I kind of, I'm gonna get this into the freezer just to kind of lock it in. And then I'm gonna get it into the fridge to completely firm up. Because I don't know what the hell's going on under here, but I know that, you know, I've been lucky so far. All right, so get it in there for as long as it needs to be in there. Final answer. Took a little bit of a breather just to uh, clear my head, figure out how I'm gonna do this next part, which is gonna be by far the most challenging 
aspect to this whole recipe, which is, uh, I gotta put my art hat on. Chapeau de art. <laughs> uh, I gotta figure out how to uh, be an artist. I have to paint. I'm not a painter. So with my food coloring here, I got a golden yellow, I have a brown, and I have the cream slash ivory. And in this thing here, I'm gonna combine equal amounts of the yellow and the cream. And then I need to dilute with vodka. You could probably go with a, a different type of vodka than this one. This is what I have on tap. So continue to add vodka, tablespoon at a time, until you get to your desired shade. So I need this to be quite a light cooked pancake color at this point. Bring over the beast. Uh, this is gonna be challenging. Paint the edges of the pancakes. the edges. So if the color is a bit too strong, you just continue to add vodka to dilute it. Don't use all your vodka though. You're gonna need it later. I think the yellow is a bit too strong the first time around, so I'm just doing a bit of a color correct here. Diluting it, calming it down. So with this little second batch of food coloring, that seems to be the ticket. And that was just like a drop or two of the yellow and a drop or two of the cream with a couple tablespoons of vodka. And it looks like the pancake color. So with brown food coloring, just a couple drops and yellow, equal quantity, and two tablespoons of vodka. What does that look like? Paint the edges of the pancakes to add darker detail. The pancakes have been cooking away on that frying pan. Here's the darker shade. This requires complete focus right now. For my final trick here is a final shade of brown. So this will be my third shade on this stack. All of a sudden, it just kind of comes together. Whether you're an artist or not, basic idea is there. You just kind of have to get the colors in the same wheelhouse and bada bing, bada boom, pancakes on your table. Uh, this whole thing is pretty damp with vodka. <laughs> uh, I'm just gonna let it, I don't know how long that's gonna take to dry. Hopefully not too long, cause I'm, you know. <laughs> but I'm gonna need a bowl. Ooh, thank you. One and a quarter cup of heavy cream. And whip it. Couple tablespoons of icing sugar sifted into my cream. And we got whipped cream. Spoon the whipped cream over the top of the cake to represent the pancake topping. You have committed yourself to this. Okay, no turning back. So on top, a good helping of the crumble. Is that a good helping? Tell me when, tell me when, tell me when. And the cherry on top, which today will be blueberry. I don't think there's anything left to do. Order up. So shall we have a look inside? Oh, fondant down. Enjoy your breakfast. More whipped cream. This cake is just screaming for more crumble. It's one of the best parts. All 
right, so this cake oy, has a breakfast vibe to it, definitely. Wasn't picking up the, the pancakes. It was more like a blueberry oatmeal muffin meets banana bread. Crumble's gotta be my favorite part, and I have so much of it left over, I'm never gonna run out of this thing. Toasted, sugary, buttery pecans with raisins. That's kind of what it tastes like. That's what it was. And it was lovely. Mixed in with the blueberries and the whipped cream. There you have it. For talking specifics with the pancake part, whoop. Uh, it, the fondant, it's just firmed up marshmallow kind of thing to it. You know, I just cut right through that and I just, I had a little bite, but that was enough. Does anyone ever actually eat the fondant part? Serious question. For me, it's just for show. It doesn't go with the whole breakfast vibe. You just kind of have to cut right through it to glory. So that's what I did today. I'm stacking Sunday cake. <sighs> I think it said it was gonna take around three hours hands-on work and then you, you bake it for 30 minutes and you should be done. Three and a half hours. That's what it says in here. The stacking Sunday cake took me all Sunday. I'm gonna mark that down as a W in the win column today, and it was a much needed one after what happened last time. That's it, that's all. This was the great anti-baking challenge, working title, I'll see you later. Good morning. I'm just not gonna give up without a fight.